Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. So this marks the first in a series of videos that will deep dive into the hypertext markup language or HTML for short. In this video, we'll begin by simply introducing what HTML is exactly, where and when it came from and why we use it on the web. So this is gonna cover the what, the where and the why and the videos that will follow this one cover the how, how we write and use HTML. So HTML is the first language of the web and was created by Sir Tim Berners-Lee. In addition to creating the HTML language that we're about to dive into, he also invented the World Wide Web. He created the first ever web browser and published the first ever web page, which went live on August 6th, 1991. Amazingly, it's still up online and you can find it here at this link, which of course is down below in the description for you. If you check the URL bar, you'll see that this is a subdomain of CERN, which is an international scientific organization based in Geneva in Switzerland. You may know CERN as the site of the Large Hadron Collider. Well, HTML was created in the very same place, and this is also where the World Wide Web was born. Tim Berners-Lee invented them both, initially with the simple purpose of making it easier for CERN researchers to communicate and to share scientific documents and papers. The idea caught on, and scientists in other parts of the world began sharing documents and communicating across networks on their campuses and eventually these separate campuses began to communicate externally with each other and the web was born. However, there was a problem that quickly became quite apparent. When the web was in its infancy, these many different organizations that were sharing information with one another were all used to writing their own unique markup for their own internal communication purposes. One company would use one markup that suited their purposes, while another company would write their own unique markup. So that was a problem. As the internet expanded to impact more people across many organisations and countries and opportunities opened up for wider collaboration across geographical areas, a change was needed. A common markup language was required to be put into use as well as a governing body to oversee and implement the standardisation process. That body was and still is the World Wide Web Consortium or W3C for short. Our friend Tim is the director of W3C and this guy down here just below him, Bert Boss, is also employed by W3C and he is one of the co-creators of CSS. We'll discuss him and CSS later on down the road. W3C publish all of their standards and you can find them here at this link which is down below in the description and you can find the standard for HTML here on GitHub or here at this link if you like looking through this kind of thing. Previously, W3C have described HTML as the web's core language for creating content for everyone to use anywhere. The current recommended standard for HTML markup is HTML5, and you may often hear the terms HTML and HTML5 used interchangeably, but they refer to exactly the same thing. If you're talking about modern HTML that is being written today, then it's HTML5. And the HTML5 standard brought with it some more meaningful tags that help us better describe what content is being marked up. They're really easy to read and maintain, as we can clearly see what a footer is, or what a section of our document is, or where the navbar is. We use the word semantic to describe tags that provide meaning, and we'll get onto semantic HTML in an upcoming video. Okay, so what can we do with HTML as budding developers? Well, we developers would use HTML to structure and display content on web pages. This content could be structured, say, within distinct headings and paragraphs, or within a list of bulleted points, or by using images and tables. We do all of this structuring by using something called tags. A simple example of an HTML tag is the P tag, which signifies a paragraph. We would have the text of our paragraph in between or wrapped by two tags. The first tag is called the opening tag, which precedes or opens that paragraph. And the second is the closing tag, which follows or closes the paragraph. Text in between these two tags is treated by web browsers as a paragraph, and when the browser renders the web page, it will render the text between the two tags as a paragraph. Viewers of a web page don't actually see the HTML, it's hidden from view, we see only the content, so the tags that you wrap your text in are never displayed to the user. 
HTML is a markup language as opposed to a programming language like JavaScript or Python, for example. A programming language allows us to create logic. So if an event happens, do X. If not, do Y, etc., etc. We can't perform any of this logic with HTML. We use it only to mark up content. The term markup arose from the marking of paper manuscripts. I'm sure you've all had assignments marked by teachers at school, and I'm talking about the red pen in the margin. In HTML, our markup isn't red pen in the margin, but it is these tags. Tags give instructions to the browser on how to mark up our text or other content for display on a web page. HTML is the simplest of the languages that we're going to learn as we simply describe what we want. Put an image here, put a paragraph next, put a heading after that, and so on. That's not to denigrate it, it's incredibly important, and without HTML, there would be no web pages. So this all means that with HTML, we can display the content of a web page, but we would be extremely limited in terms of adding style and interactivity. Later on, we'll see how we can combine HTML with CSS and JavaScript to start building styled interactive web pages. Okay, so HTML is the perfect place to get started with web development. It's easy to understand and you can apply the skills that you're learning instantly. Over the next few videos, we'll look with more scrutiny at the structure of HTML pages, the general syntax rules that HTML follows, and then we'll delve into the many, many tags that make up a typical web page, such as those that make headings, paragraphs, links, lists, and images to name a few. At the conclusion of this section, you'll have built your first web page with HTML and I'll provide the CSS styles for you so that you'll have a complete web page. And as we learn CSS and pick that up, we'll build out the styles for the web page too. So we'll leave things here. If you found this video useful, then please do remember to like, subscribe, share, and all of that good stuff as it really helps with YouTube's algorithm and makes the channel much more discoverable for people that could benefit from the content. Also, reach out to us on social media or in the comments section below if you have any questions or feedback or even if you just want to say hi. Links to all of the resources used in this video and more are in the description below. And if there's any useful resources that you know of, then please add them in the comments and I will put them in the description. So thanks so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Join me in the next video where we will discuss the syntax of HTML. In other words, we'll be breaking down how it is written. So see you soon.